that's a bit. Hello everyone. I'm just going to clean my camera lens slightly. It looks a bit already live. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So um, I have Dr. Ahmed with me today to help me answer a, a very important question. Something that the two of us um, as trainers have been asked a few times around complications. When What do you do when your patient is allergic to hyaluronidase and you really want to solve a problem that they've got? So um, let's go over here. I think the light will be better. <laughs> sure. I'm reflecting off the ceiling quite a lot. Oh, that's better. We're both more prettier. <laughs> um, so yeah, the question, uh, th and this is something we've both had delegates ask, and we've had both, in now I know of two people who've dealt with it which, in a way which I'd like to discuss. Um, and it's, it's that situation, I mean, there's obviously multiple times you can use hyaluronidase. The one, um, and, and it, you get kind of put in a position where you've got to make a decision. So I tend to allergy test all the time and I've got a quite a good idea about what a really positive allergy test is as opposed to a little bit of redness. I had one the other day, just massive weald. It was actually someone who knows anaphylactic to something else. So we thought, I thought I'd test just to make sure she got this big reaction. Now she's deciding whether she wants to have filler at all. So say we were in a different situation and we'd done that allergy test and she had a problem that really needed to be solved. So. The one I heard of was someone with tear troughs that were massively puffy and really upsetting her life. What do you do um, in that situation? Because you can try and massage it, but it just the problem doesn't go away. And this can get really bad for people's lives. It can really be holding things back quite a lot. So Ahmed's day job, uh, well, his day job's aesthetics now, but he, <laughs> he do, he's an anaesthetist and he's dealt with a lot of people with in anaphylaxis, um, you know, real life and death stuff in a hospital. Um, and the question is, <clears throat> there, because there are two options which I've, which I've heard of. One is, there's just no way I'm going to hire laser, it. just we have to wait. And some fillers will last two or three years. So you might have someone with a, with a kind of low eyelid puffiness or some complication that they don't like that lasts two or three years and their life's going to be massively held back by that. You can try the other stuff like massaging and like really trying to squeeze the filler out. Um, but the, all of that, you know, just may not solve the problem quickly enough and you've got someone at the other end of that that's suffering. So the question is, you get a faint allergy test. Hi, Sarah. Um, what do you do? Do you think, I mentioned in your opinion, but how would you feel about loading them up with antihistamines and steroids yeah. and, and, then, and, then, and then reversing it? What do you think the pros and cons of that would be? It's a scary term. Uh, true anaphylaxis is really, really life-threatening. It's out there, you know, it's, you know when we teach advanced life support, Anaphylaxis is one of the scenarios where we teach it can quickly lead to cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. So when I'm speaking to the delegates, one of the delegates asked me this question as well is, allergy is a spectrum. Yeah. It can be anything from a little bit of redness, itching to the full-blown anaphylaxis or anything in between. I don't know where it could be. The immunologists out there that research and study all of this tell you it can take only one molecule to trigger a full anaphylaxis, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. When you're... Um, if you you know, if you have someone who's probably had a patch test and it's gone red, itchy, you really that kind of patient you want to send them to the closest A and E that has plastics, and they can deal with this better in a more controlled way. When you're in a working solo in an isolated clinic without much support around you, it can really be scary. I think I think that's that's always the point I've always had, which is it might be possible to do this. Like you might actually be able to take a risk, treat them, get away with it, that's great. But are you prepared for the what if? And, and for me, that your situation, your clinic is quite a big part of that. Um, you know, if you have backup, you know, also your own skills are massively important. If you've dealt with anaphylaxis a hundred times and you, know, you work in an allergy clinic and, and you're kitted out, it's a different argument to whether you're uh, you know, by yourself in a salon. Lots of practitioners work in that environment. What are you gonna do in a salon? You haven't even got a proper bed to lie people flat on and, and they're having an anaphylactic reaction. You've got, you know, you've got your two EpiPens, but it takes 45 minutes for the ambulance to arrive, which is perfectly possible. I, I stopped at a road traffic accident with a possible spinal injury and we waited an hour for the ambulance. You know, people, they don't get there as quickly as you think they might. So are you prepared for the worst is, is a big question to ask. Um, do you know what you're doing with anaphylaxis? The other question is, and we don't know the answer to this, the ratio of um, people who are positive to, uh, in terms of an allergy test to people who are actually anaphylaxis, it's probably a very small percentage. So, you know, 
if we're really building this into the equation, there are a lot of unknown variables. I don't think anyone knows exactly what proportion of people who give a positive allergy test are anaphylactic. Um, but that's the kind of thing that if we knew, you can start to weigh up the risk. Because if it's one in 2,000, maybe you can do it. You know, what's a positive allergy test? That might be itchy and um, something but, else. But Tim, just to back up that again, there are risks. We know that high, the hyaluronidase that's available in the market now is an animal origin. So that, that alone makes it more allerg allergenic than any other drug. Yeah. So we have to be precautious when we're using it. I, I, and you like, you know, to back up the second point you make, in any of these uh, protocols for dealing with an emergency, the first thing you should do is call for help. Who's going to help you when you're working mm -hmm. on your own? Yeah. The ambulance will not be there instantly. So what I'd love to hear from anyone who's watching, anyone who's trained in, um, in allergic reactions, who deals with it every day, who knows a lot about anaphylaxis, anything you can contribute to what situation you think you would feel safer about actually highlighting someone who's got a positive allergy test, we'd love to hear your comments on that. Um, any other information around the kind of ratios of you know, positive allergy test to, a, to anaphylaxis would be useful to know. Um, and basically anything you interesting in this because this is more of a question than than an instructional video yeah. like we we just don't there's a lot more that we need to find out before we can confidently decide what route to take but this is complex and lots of people basically don't know the answer and you're going to get asked one day you'll be in that situation and you're going to have to make a decision yeah. um personally i'd want a person i'm quite risk averse i'd like a lot of backup i'd like ahmed in the room with his <laughs> intubation equipment and you know maybe a couple of support of staff, then I, then I might be, you might do it. I also think the idea of loading them up with prednisolone and antihistamines makes sense. You would definitely do that if someone had a mine, mine allergic reaction. Maybe there's, I, I'd be quite interested, so I've got this new bit of kit and it keeps <laughs> focusing things. Um, if you, what about if you had an, a negative allergy test, uh, sorry, positive allergy test, you load them with antihistamine and, and steroids, then you do an allergy test and it's negative. Again, you do, <laughs> you do, I'd still want to be cautious because, you know, the cascade for a true anaphylaxis, there could be different paths to a true anaphylaxis and, uh, you know, I'd still be very cautious. Mm -hmm. Like you said, I want to have an Easter set around, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to be solo, I'd, I'd make sure I've got some backing around. Yeah. I think the key thing we're getting is you need a lot of backup. Yes. You need, you need to be covering all your bases and you need to have thought about this for a long time rather than just on the spur of the moment have a go. Um, which is actually, I know of two people who've done this and they've both got good results, as in they've reversed it without any big problem. Mm -hmm. um, but they both put a lot of thought into how to make this safe and you know, they're, they're out on a limb because it's not, it's not, no, there, are, there are no protocols for this. So um, that's what I'd like to do, start a discussion on this, see what people think and see, see what we can do for patients that's best and keeps everyone safe while also solving the problem and not just hiding away from the problem because there is something around the, you know, saying sorry I can't do anything is easy for you but it's very hard for the patient so maybe there's something in between. So I don't know if you want to add anything else. I agree, I agree with Tim with everything you said. I think it's, you know, if you're going to be injecting hyaluronidase, the days, you know it's risky, you know you need to do a patch test, I, you know, I'd be very cautious anyway mm. to start with. There's some good news, I suppose. I don't know if, uh, if you've heard Tim, but I've understand that in the United States there's a, a recombinant hyaluronidase yeah, yeah. and a uh, human origin. That's right. There's a new hyalase out. It's called Hyalex, which is of human origin, and mm. presumably that will the whole benefit with that is that you'll have a lot less chance of reaction. So I'm hoping that will come to the UK, and, and then then we'll have to worry about this a lot less. But yeah, Hyalex is called recombinant human. Hyaluronic acid, hyaluronic days. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to reading these comments. Um, I see that we've got uh, Karen, you've had a reaction, anaphylactic reaction, uh, and you had to accompany to hospital. That sounds like a nightmare. Mm. I can't see the rest of the comment. Um, Susan says, Do you think we should be you doing hyalase patch testing prior to any filler treatment? Um, probably it's slight overkill, given that we're not even sure what the ratio is of, you know, the, if you look at the number of I, I do it in people who are anaphylactic because they want to know what will happen. So let's test it, make sure that we're not... Uh, I don't think this is actually helping matters. <laughs> <It's never laughs> gotcha. um, so I, th I think if someone's very allergic to lots of things, you might want to answer that question before you go further. Um, obviously, that's a risk in itself. The other thing would be the ratio of number of treatments you do to hyalazing. It's like, I don't know what your ratio is, but it's 
less than one in a thousand chance I'm going to highlight someone if I've treated them. Um, so th that that makes it, I think, maybe a little bit unnecessary to do the higher laser testing. Bear in mind, it's going to increase your costs for for a patient. You have to you have to prescribe them some higher laser, test it, cost you at least fifteen quid each time, and uh, and only one in a thousand of them will ever even need it. And of the percentage of people who are who are positive from that, that in fact the rates of percentage I've just looked this up before points point um, about one percent top end people are allergic to it and some papers say point point one percent so there's a range of being one in a, one in a, um, one in a hundred and one in a thousand so if you multiply that by one in two thousand chance of actually reversing something you've got a very very small chance that that allergy test will actually be useful to you so I would say there is no point in there's no point in higher lasing in doing an allergy test prior to all dermal fillers. That's my point of view. Open to discussion on that as well. Uh, what do you think? I, I agree, Tim. It's a bit of an overkill as well. You know, it, it, the hyaluronic acid that we inject in whatever type of filler you use is made of bacteria. It, we all have the same hyaluronic acid, mine, same as yours. It's not species yeah. specific, uh, you know, so there's very low incidence of allergic reactions from the hyaluronic acid itself, the filler. So, you know, testing high, and the, the incidence of lumps and so is still proportionally low as well. So testing hyaluronic acid before you do inject filler will be a bit too much. Um, the amount of higher laser you inject also makes a big difference. This is an interesting thing, I just found a paper. If they, when they injected, um, for some cases they use huge amounts, and up to 30% of people had reactions when they're using like 200,000 units, which is, more, you know, it's more than 20 times you'd ever use what we what we would use, even in a like really aggressively trying to reverse something. So that makes a difference. Someone says um, a false negative patch test. Well, this is it. I mean, I actually don't know enough about immunology to say if you yeah. if you get a negative, does that mean what? How much does that mean you're not going to have anaphylaxis? Yeah. You said I this. mean, the mediators for anaphylaxis is it's not only histamine. There's yeah. lots of other mediators. So I don't think you will get a false negative. Uh, if you're going to have an allergic reaction, you will have an allergic reaction regardless of what you've had. Well, I'm sorry, I think we probably asked, basically left you guys with more questions to answer mm -hmm. than have given you answers. But I think it's worth having the discussion. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed, My for pleasure. teaching us. I didn't give you a full introduction. Dr. Ahmed mm -hmm. is one of our, um, now actually been here a long time, clinicians and trainers at Skin Viva Training. Um, I'm sure you'll see him again because I'm going to uh, go around and interview all, all the doctors eventually. But um, thank you very much for your help. Pleasure, Pleasure. Um, you. If you found this useful or if you think it'll be useful to someone, if you could like or comment underneath and um, uh, or share it into a group if you think it's interesting and I really appreciate that. Really love your comments uh, and I'll keep reading them as I always do in the next few days as more and more people watch this. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that's been interesting at least. <laughs>